Welcome back to Random Dudes Workshop. Uh, today we're going to be diving into a new hobby. So in the past, you've seen me do a little bit with my three, do a little bit with my 3D printer here. Uh, for Christmas, my wonderful wife has gotten me a 24 watt laser diode machine. It is the Atom Stack A24 Pro. So brand new. It's supposed to be newer generation easier to use and so this video is going to be assessing how easy it is for someone with no laser experience to get into the laser cutter slash engraving world so stick around as we unbox this thing and go through all the steps to get it running its first calibration test <laughs> So it's been 24 hours. I spoke with Adam Stack through email uh, about missing out on the tracking numbers. Double checked my emails, couldn't find any updated tracking numbers. So within 45 minutes of sending an email to Adam Stack about my engraver missing the two pieces that my wife ordered with it, the honeycomb panel and the air assist, they automatically sent me a new email completely separate of the email I sent to them, updating my tracking number all of a sudden. So, the first update was on the honeycomb panel and it was showing last known location, uh, shipping from China, and then fast forward 12 hours to this morning, uh, first thing six o'clock I get a notification from UPS that is estimated to be here in two or three days. So, that's good. What I'm finding the least bit cool about this is the lack of communication. Like those items should have been updated with their shipping information if they're a separate package automatically. And it should have been made known that those items were gonna ship separately from the main uh, unit. I do appreciate Adam Stack getting the unit sent, but without the others two, items you really miss out on what the whole package is about so in the future if that was rectified just a little bit more communication I would have been fine knowing that those things were coming separately uh, moving forward though we're going to go ahead and finish the setup on these and I'll talk more about my communication with customer support at the end of this video thanks for watching let's get this thing set up So uh, I have Lightburn loaded up on my Linux Fedora laptop. 
I was having a lot of issues getting it to communicate with the USB cord. So, for my own sanity, I'm going to swap out to a Windows laptop, but if you're using Linux, just keep in mind the USB drivers do not appear to be plug and play for this laser engraver. Okay, so had some issues with the laptop, swapped it out. Uh, this was my first attempt. This is a pre-built-in material test, but it doesn't really work that well on, like, overall. Like, it didn't shade or anything else like a normal material test would. Um, so it just kind of got the outline, but it gives me a good idea of where to start if I could actually read those numbers. <laughs> so, guess we'll try again. I am completely new at this, so we'll find out. So what I found out as I was doing the material tests is there's a lot of settings, and you can see a temp number two isn't turning out the way we want it to either. Um, but it took me four attempts total to get to the point where I finally understood how the material test worked, and I watched a couple different videos, so really familiarize yourself. It's not a plug and play material test yet. All right, so now finally understand the way to set everything up. So off and running and getting some projects done here. So stick around, you can watch a couple of the first projects that I did on my laser engraver. and just kind of a brief highlight of everything you saw in the video. So this is my test board. It is made out of 1 8 inch basswood or basswood, however you want to say it. I'll come in for a closer look. This is attempt number one. Um, just default, no changes on the setting for test material. And then this is the attempt number two where I attempted and just made all the exact same power. Whoops. This is attempt number three. Uh -huh. Way too much power, way too f slow. So I stopped it before it could go any further. And well, let's see, attempt number four, when I finally figured out how to do it. And so this is what I've been doing my base wood engravings on that you saw before this part of the video. Right? So now I'll talk about the experience overall. I think without a doubt that laser diodes could be a very fun tool for a lot of people, a lot of DIY people. I think that the majority though are in what I call the Ender 3 state of laser diodes, which means that for a long time, Creality created the Ender 3 for 3D printers and it was stuck in the same spot, same speed, with little to no innovation. I think what we're seeing here is we're right on the cusp of when 3D printing went from Ender 3s, from Creality to Bamboo Labs, and there's gonna be some product that's out there that matches these for the price and creates something that's much better. When that's gonna happen, I don't know. Um, if it did the same thing as 3D printing, I would say that we're probably around a year, two years out, depending on what manufacturers really think that people want out of this. So we're in the hobbyist enthusiast market and not quite in mainstream like 3D printers have now become. So for laser diodes, that's a good thing, which means that in the future, we'll start seeing more innovation, cheaper prices, and all that fun stuff. For now, 
if a manufacturer really wanted to take something like this atom stack here and make it super competitive and way over the top, they would take Lightburn, which is a fantastic program, but you hit a wall and you don't really know how to use it. And they would approach it like a 3D printer and slicer. What that means is that in 3D printing, you can pick the material and it has all the presets like heat, speed, baseline presets that people are gonna to wanna to go. Now, if a laser diode company like Atomstack developed something just like Lightburn and released it for even the same price as Lightburn or free would be even better and it automatically recognized each machine like uh, Ultimaker Kira does then and it would load all the presets in and all the origins and all the X homes and all that fun stuff then they could be super highly competitive with their own line of laser diodes. Now, whether or not that's gonna happen anytime soon, I couldn't tell you, but my experience, as you saw, um, I'm a fairly technical guy, and still I spent many hours off camera trying to figure out how exactly to set this laser diode up and get everything rolling right along as a complete beginner. So, this is your complete beginner review from Random Dudes Workshop. If you liked the video or you found it helpful, hit uh, like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, that way I know that people actually like seeing this stuff. <laughs> Anyways, have a nice day, till next time.